Ooh, this has been a crazy busy Monday. I wanted to try to work on and drop this video a little earlier, but stuff happened. Um, I had a lot of stuff I got to take care of. Carter, he getting ready to start school today. Um, and it's just, it's been a lot. Been handling a lot. But uh, we're here now. Um, this is going to be a crazy busy, I can't even say week. Well, yeah, I guess week. Because I was going to say like um, a little more than 24 hours, about 27 hours, depending on when you see in this video. Um, because the Ravens, they have a lot of moves to make uh, to get down to 53 men on the roster. Um, but then it doesn't stop there because they have to get to the 53 man roster. Well, the initial 53 man roster by Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. But then the following day, by, by Wednesday, I think at 4 p.m. Eastern time, too, they have to establish the practice squad. Um, just to give you all a heads up, the way that it's going to work, uh, the initial 53-man roster is just simply that. It's an initial 53-man roster. Um, so that means a, a lot of the moves that are made, some of them might be head scratchers. Some of them might seem a little strange or whatnot, like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But again, it's a process. That's not going to be the final roster. That's not going to be the roster that they go out there with week one with. Like most of the guys will be there for week one, but they're going to have to maneuver and do some little crazy things to get the roster right. So just a heads up, it's going to be very busy. Um, I would expect probably a lot of notifications from us. So turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Um, so because, again, it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty busy. Very, very busy. Anyway, um, before we get into this episode, got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, Justin H. Appreciate you, Justin. Um, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, then you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't want to, that's cool. We're also introducing channel memberships. Uh, so with channel memberships, it's just uh, something super simple, super simple. If you want to join uh, as a channel member, uh, you can do that. It's right next to the subscribe button, but most of y'all already subscribed. So uh, you can click on the join button that's next to it. But uh, for channel members, it's just a, a nice way to have your name highlighted already in the comment section. Every comment that you put, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to really stand out already um, from Jump. And it's just, just a little cool little feature of YouTube. That's it. Super, 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 super simple. If you want to become a channel member, cool. If you don't want to become a channel member, again, it's always cool. Either way, it's all love on this end. Now, let's get into uh, the first question that came from a patron, my guy, A.W. Juice Man. Now, uh, he said, hey, Graven, congratulations on the baby girl, my brother. All love and support. Ha <laughs> ha. Caught our big brother now. How about that, man? LOL. So happy for you. And she is going to get a good dad. Thank you, but no thanks, uh, because we, we are not having a baby. Uh, there was a little mix-up uh, the other day on Instagram, because I posted a picture, me and my wife at a baby shower, but the baby shower was not for us. And initially, when I first posted it, I was, I was just thinking, okay, it's a picture of us at a baby shower, but then I realized, like, I saw a bunch of people saying congrats, and I'm like, oh, no, ain't no congratulations over here. No, no congratulations over here for us. Um, and I had to get that cleared up. We ain't having no baby. Um, so anyway, I appreciate the congrats, but it's not needed. Anyway, he said, uh, I've, I've been pondering this, uh, on my mind for a while. 2014 and 2018 were the days of CJ Mosley. We found our heir to the almighty number 52. However, Ozzy or any of the Ravens guys on top weren't taking the initiative to get him an extension or signed at the time. Mosley was our most valuable and best player aside from T. Sizzle, but he was aging season by season. Judon and Zadarius weren't exactly them dudes. Uh, that, then there's uh, uh, Tucker, Marlowe. Oh, then he said right now there's currently uh, Tucker, Marlowe. Uh, oh, Marlowe was a rookie back then, and in his second year, he was teammates with C.J. Mosley. Ravens basically let him walk. Do you think that same thing will happen to Lamar? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I see what you're saying. Like, C.J. Mosley seemed to be like a cornerstone piece for the Ravens, but um, I, I, I would hope not. But C.J. Mosley, they did. And, I mean, it, when you think about it, especially the way you put it, I mean, think about it, it all sounds pretty familiar. But it's, it's a different position. It's the middle linebacker versus the quarterback. And we hope it would not get there. But the Ravens did offer C.J. Mosley a deal. They offered him a deal to stay. Like, hey, it goes an extension. There you go. Take it or leave it. He left it because the money wasn't right. So, hopefully, Lamar. <laughs> Hopefully the same thing don't happen. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta 
done made it. I done made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Next question came from my boy MG. Shout out to you being a patron, my brother. He said, Hey, what's good, engraving? Hope you and the family are doing well with us being bit. Thin, a bit thin uh, at the edge rush position temporarily, at least until Tyus comes back. And since our interior pressure has improved with Pierce and Jones, even though now Jones is out too, um, do you think that we that we'll free up our edge guys and give them better looks at the quarterback? In other words, we also solidify our edge rush by proximity. Let me know what you think. Looking forward to all your content and peace. Appreciate it. Um, so just really in improving the quality um, of them rushing the quarterback. I, I think that's it's, it's to be determined. I mean, so far in the preseason, it's been a good start. The pass rush has looked uh, a lot better, but it's also been the preseason because in the preseason, not only has there been a nice little pass rush, but they've also produced sacks. And that ha was a big issue with Wink throughout his tenor. He, he could produce some pressure now, but it, it wouldn't produce sacks. And that's why when he said, oh, sacks are overrated. No, I, I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. They are definitely not overrated. Um, so with that being said, uh, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time till we really find out how real and how significant of a positive or negative change this Mike McDonald defense is. But if he allows edge rushers to be edge rushers and get quality edge rushes, then we'll be in good hands. Next question. <laughs> Well, really, it was a comment. It came from my guy, Gary, and I appreciate you being a patron. Gary, he said, the Ravens do not need street clothes on the bench. Will Fuller, just my sense. And he, that was it. Straight up like that. He ain't had nothing else to say about it. Next question came from another patron, my guy, Phil. He said, I know a lot of fans like Tyler Huntley and others say trade him because he deserves a chance to battle for a starting spot. But I don't see that till next offseason because it's too late. And right now, Seattle and Atlanta are tanking for a top 10 draft pick and, um, to draft the top two uh, quarterbacks, Bryce Young from Alabama and C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, due to being in rebuild mode. Uh, through all preseason games, I got to say, Anthony Brown has looked better than Tyler Huntley because he pushes it downfield. Yes, he does. Uh, he does a really good mix. Uh, he'll, he'll do the dinking and dunking now. He'll take the little short stuff, but he will push that ball downfield for sure. He will take them chances. Um, and they're like... They're like calculated chances. They're not like bad chances. He's not like throwing these terrible throws. No, he takes some good chances, and they've been paying off. Anyway, he said uh, he has a smooth throwing motion, and he has the arm strength. 256 yards on only 15 completed passes. A lot of fans will disagree, but I would rather see Brown uh, as <coughs> the number two QB because Huntley is mainly a dink and dunk passer. Your thoughts engraving and take care. I wouldn't be mad at that. I was just talking to uh, one of my guys the other day um, and saying um, that I, I would not be mad. Oh, yeah, it was my guy Marcus. Um, I was saying I wouldn't be mad if they went with uh, Anthony Brown as QB2 and, and Tyler Huntley got traded. So Tyler Huntley, he could get a chance to go start somewhere. And then they would have another undrafted free agent uh, backup rookie quarterback like they did with Tyler Huntley a couple years ago. And Lamar was a starter. It would be the same thing all over again. So I, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. And, and I, I would be comfortable with it. Um, so... Will it happen? Probably not, but you never know. I, well, we'll know over the next 24 hours, but probably not. And he said also, who do you think has earned the last linebacker spot between John Ross or Christian Welch? They both played great. Well, Ross had one second. Welch had two and a half. Mm, is there a way to do both? Well, uh, I, I would say probably Ross, um, but then Welch on the practice squad. I don't think anybody's going to take him from the practice squad. So I would say, uh, yeah, Ross, Roster, Welch, squad. Next two questions came from my guy, Javo. He said, as a child, we always wondered if we came across a lamp and a genie appeared, what would our three wishes be? Well, today, Mr. Engraven, you found that lamp. A genie appears and granted you three wishes. But there's a catch. Your three wishes can only be Ravens related. So what are your three wishes? It can be Ravens past, present, or future. So think carefully because you only get three and you can't wish for more wishes. Um, well, one... The Ravens win the next three Super Bowls. Or, actually, the Ravens, they, they win the Super Bowl every... Because this is this could actually be one wish. The Ravens win the Super Bowl every other year for the next 10 years. Oh, so that would be five Super Bowls. Yeah, I would take that. Uh, that'd be cool. They win the Super Bowl every other year for the next five years. Um, the Ravens, they uh, change their philosophy. That'd be another wish. They update their philosophy. Um, they don't, again, it's not getting rid of the running game, but they just put play, place a lot more emphasis uh, on the passing game and on the wide receivers and really get the, the most out of those guys. Um, and number three, uh, they show you why the cap is cap. Uh, and then his next question, uh, he said, uh, what are your thoughts on this poll? Who do you think is the worst QB to ever win a Super Bowl? 
Uh, so some of the names that are, that are on this poll were Trent Dilfer, Joe Flacco, Nick Foles, Brad Johnson. I, I couldn't put Joe Flacco on there. Um because, again, once he got his little groove, once he got his little Flacco mojo in the playoffs after those first couple of years, then he was on in the playoffs. Um, Brad Johnson, that was with the Bucks, I think. Nick Foles, obviously, with the Eagles. Uh, Trent Dilfer with the Ravens, too. Um, probably Trent. Out of those four guys, i say probably Trent, then Brad. Um, then Foles and, and Flacco would be dead last, out of, uh, dead last out of that list. Next question came from Tack13. What's up, Tack? He said, hey, Greg, hope your day is going well. I was just thinking about the Ravens offense, and what came to my mind was why Greg Roman is not putting his players nor offense in the best position to succeed. If you have Lamar Jackson, DCs are going to stack the box just because of the narrative. Anyways, and if you have a healthy JK, you could run a spread offense, which he did in college. And played at a high level with Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely out wide. This will most likely leave Bateman and Robinson, who can win one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Likely will most likely go off against a linebacker. One-on-one uh, -on -one coverage, or if you put a, a CB3 on him, it's probably going to be a matchup nightmare on slants, and you would have uh, the threat of Lamar Jackson taking off or handing it off to J.K. I just don't think Roman and company have done the absolute best position to... Uh, Oh, have done the absolute best um, to contend for a ring deep in the postseason. Also, Ravens, please play. Please, please pay Lamar Jackson five years, two hundred fifty mil already. You're not lowballing the guy that says he wants to become a billionaire. Oh, what a beautiful way to end this. End that. End that off. Um, yeah, I, I love how you put it. I, I love how you um you you put that offense into perspective and how you uh you just really brought it to life. Um, because he talked about them running the spread offense, so Lamar and J.K. in the backfield. Okay. And then, yeah, Bateman, Demarcus Robinson, likely Andrews. It's like, who do you double? And, and that's what I've been wanting for the Ravens for the longest, for them to have quality weapons and really be like, all right, who, who's, who are they going to try to take out the game? Because we got somebody else that could go off. So hopefully we get to see that this year with Ravens offense. Next question came from a guy, Rodney K. And I, and I, been, I appreciate y'all because we're getting a lot of new faces in here. We got, we got a lot of the same people who saying quite, but now this episode, we're getting a lot of new faces. So I appreciate y'all. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Been watching for years. Uh, I grew up as a Ravens fan and it grew more watching the channel. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but back to the matter at hand. First question, how many yards and TDs do you predict likely will get? And second, do you think Giro will see the possibility of this? I play quarterback and understand routes and defenses. Well, I'm sure they will line likely up outside on many plays, along with Mark Andrews being inside, not to mention Robinson and Bateman will be on the field as well. Wow, both questions like go hand in hand with each other. This one and the last one. But anyway, he said as well, what, does this, uh, what this does is throws the defense off, having likely splitting the coverage with Andrews needing to be doubled. Likely will either get mismatch, a mismatched corner to guard him or a safety, which will put the defense at a disadvantage to begin with. Let me know what you think, and thanks for listening. Sorry for the long message. No, you ain't got to apologize for that. How? That is crazy. Because these are two different people, two different emails, but this is pretty much the same exact question. Um, so about mismatches and that's what we hope happens. That's what we really hope happens. Hope the Ravens make a lot of mismatches uh, with their offense versus other teams defenses because they have so many possibilities. They got so many possibilities and different things that they can do and, and just I really hope they take advantage of it. I really do. We really do. We all really do. Um, but to the first part of the question, how many yards and touchdowns do I predict likely will get? Uh, I say, uh. I, I think the yardage will be, I guess, low. I say about like six, six, six hundred, six fifty yards, maybe seven hundred. Yeah, I say about six hundred. I say about six hundred yards, but I think the touchdown will be high. So like six hundred yards, maybe like seven, eight touchdowns. See, a, another name that really don't really send in questions like that. Next question came from my guy Chris L. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope you're well. Got a question for you that might in intrigue all members of our team. Keep it clean, family. I, I love how you put that. He said, our team, keep it clean, family, because that's exactly what it is. He said, unless I missed a big report or something, have you heard or wondered on how defense is adjusting to the new scheme? It's a whole new thought process for everybody. Is it similar to his scheme at uh, Michigan last year? He did bring Michigan's defense from 115th overall in 2020 to third overall last year and seems to utilize every player's strengths as a whole to improve reactions, assignments, and teamwork to explode in a good way. I looked at some film from last year and the first two games showed some similarity with a ton of zone rotation, combo zone reads with man zero coverage outside. Or they could just be duping like they do and show complete brand new schemes to the Jets. Sounds nuts, but it would be unlike Ravens to show complete decoy offense and defense this month to give up nothing to the league. 
I think this might be possible, at least somewhat, because uh, I've seen just one or two Roman and McDonald cookie cutter presses all summer, and Harbaugh is King Vague. I like that. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Sorry for the rant. As always, stay safe. Take care of the family and be cool. Appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, I mean, we, for that, I think we won't know till we know. Because I know um, we can start to see a little bit of stuff in preseason, but they're they not showing nothing in preseason. They, they ain't showing nothing there. They're doing very, very basic stuff. Very basic stuff. Very simple stuff. They not really scheming up like that. They look trying out little stuff here and there, trying to get different guys involved in what, but they ain't doing nothing crazy. So I think what we'll really learn about Mike McDonald um, and how he operates, definitely, obviously, in the first game. But I think by like week three or four, uh, we could start to really look for patterns uh, with this defense and see what he specializes in, what he does great, and what he needs to improve on as well. Next question came from my guy, Jared. He said, what's up, Engraven? God bless you and the fam. I was just watching a question from subscribers on the day uh, of the Ravens' last preseason game. In the video, there was a question about who will be CB3, cornerback three, and it made me realize how much depth and strength we have in the secondary. True. Uh, forgive me if this question sounds goofy. I don't have much technical football knowledge on formations and such, but do you think the Ravens should try to play as much nickel as possible this year? I think we should try to put the best 11 on the field. Uh, it's not a secret that our linebackers are much weaker than our corners and our safeties. I think Kyle Hamilton is a better tackler than someone like Pat Queen. Oof. And he's more versatile. No hate to Pat. I hope he breaks out this season. You always talk about the, how the Ravens should play to their strengths. I think that means putting the best 11 on defense, even if that means the inside linebackers, Pat Queen, Bynes, and Harrison getting less snaps. Again, no disrespect to them. They're all on this team for a reason. But on paper, the secondary is elite. And I think they should all be on the field as many times as possible. I appreciate your videos and hope to see you at the bank come late January. Hey, <laughs> I hope so, too. I appreciate it, Jared. Hey, um... Yeah, man, I, I think with, with the secondary, yeah, it is definitely a position of strength. Um, but everything just depends because I can't sit here and say, all right, I, I just hope that they in nickel as much as possible. What if, it's, what if they're on the goal line? What if the offense is on the goal line? You can't be in nickel then. You're going to be in a little goal line package of what now, goal line defense. It just, it just all depends. So you, you want, like you mentioned, you got to put your best players on the field for sure. Um, as far as the, the cornerback and linebacker situation, I think that's that's where it gets really tricky because that's where a lot of safeties could come into play. You mentioned Kyle Hamilton. That's one of them. Chuck Clark could come into play um, with Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison and Josh Bynes. And of course, the, the, the roster, this this video is being recorded before the roster is official. So I don't think any of those guys, obviously, Patrick Queen not going to get cut. Josh Bynes, I don't think he will either. Um, Malik Harrison. I don't think he will, but there's always that chance. But I don't think he will, but you never know. But I don't think he will, but I just don't know. I, I don't think he will. Um, but, yeah, they're going to be doing a lot of mixing and matching. Uh, they, they're going to be doing a lot of mixing and matching with those linebackers and the safeties. Uh, Tony Jeff, if, if he makes the roster, we'll see. Because um, he could be one of those guys that ends up playing a lot of linebacker, the dime linebacker role. Um, him, Chuck Clark, Kyle Hamilton, them just rotating a lot. Um, but with that, when you have a, a defensive back like a safety that can play that role, it can also help you in pass coverage, depending on who it is. Because sometimes uh, there'll be safeties that are better than linebackers in coverage. Sometimes there'll be linebackers that are better than safety in coverage. It, it just all depends. But I do like your thinking about really having the best 11 on the field. But then at the same time, uh, since there is a lot of depth in the secondary, which is a beautiful thing, um, that allows you to have a better rotation and of course you're not going to be subbing guys in and out left and right back and forth you don't want to do that because again guys got to get into a rhythm and whatnot but if somebody's tired if somebody's having a st struggle game for a little bit or somebody just needs a little break for a quick little breather or something they just like whew, i've been out there getting cooked or hey man i've been out there locking down and i'm a little tired from locking all these receivers down hopefully it's the latter uh, but you have other quality guys that could step in. Next question. Hey, and you know what? At first, when I first saw the title, the subject said, who's joining Wink? And I'm like, what? But then I peeked at the question just now. And, I, oh, okay, I get you now. He said, quick question. Oh, he came from my guy Zadarian. He said, quick question before the 53-man roster is finalized. Tony Jefferson, Geno Stone, or Darius Washington. One is getting cut and scooped up by the Giants. Who will it be? Mm, that's something right there. Um... I think I think Geno Stone definitely makes the roster. I think he, I think he's a lock to make the roster. 
Um, I think he's the safest one, especially out of these three, to make the roster. Um, second safest, second safest for uh, I think really for emotional value, um, being a veteran. Uh, and because then they really love him, Tony Jefferson. But I don't think he's safe though. I don't think Tony Jefferson or Darius Washington are safe. But in the order of safest, I think Geno Stone is a lock, and I think Tony Jefferson has a, a much better chance than our Darius Washington to make the roster. Um, but, yeah, so I, I could see them cutting Tony Jefferson. Oh, but as far as who's joining Wink, um, I could see them doing one of them Raven deals where they cut Tony Jefferson initially, and then they end up bringing him back after they put somebody on IR designated to return. Uh, or I could see them, yeah, I could, or I could see him going to Wink. If the Giants needed some help there, I could see them. Yeah, either one. Really, Tony Jefferson, though, because that would give them a better. I'm not sure what their safety position is right now. Um, but if I had to pick one, I, I would say Tony Jefferson. The last question on this episode came from my boy, Lord Valley. He said, what's up, my guy? Been a long time since I spoke, but it's preseason is over, and I'm loving how the Ravens did the entire offseason. He said, now after looking at the, a third of the team play, I love it. Coming in to probably the biggest season in Ravens history on offense, Lamar's contract, the Ravens running backs coming back, receivers playing against all odds. Yes, sir. O-line seeking redemption. Ooh, I hope they get it. <laughs> and, of course, the play call of Roman uh, and game management of Harbaugh. Spot on. Uh, he says, so I see a gem in that boy likely. And, honestly, we found our number three pass catcher. Number one, Andrews. Number two, Bateman. And number three, likely. Now, the other guys will hit if used right. But I can see the offense lining up three receiver sets. But with Bateman. Robinson and likely as a slot opposite of Andrews, but still having Andrews on the line with Dobbins in, in single back formation. See, I'm loving this episode because this is the third time when when y'all are really coming up with these different concepts and, and these visions of, of of the Ravens offense and, and what and the potential of it, what they could do, what they should do, what they might do, and just the the the, the possibilities of the success that it can make the Ravens have on offense. I, I appreciate y'all for that. Um, but he said, I think it's no possible way likely plays less than 30 snaps and doesn't get eight balls thrown uh, to him. He is Aaron Hernandez 2.0, and I can't wait. Hopefully he is not Aaron Hernandez 2.0, but I get what you're saying. Uh, anyway, he said uh, he is the star that we were looking for in an actual wideout. And with the addition of Robinson, if he can create separation two to three times a game, Lamar can, and, and Lamar can deliver that deep ball. OMG, look out. That's my time. Love the channel, Ravens Flock. Let's go. Hey, spot on, man. Spot on. I, I hope all of this stuff that y'all been talking about in this episode all comes to fruition when it comes to that offense. Um, and Ravens just they 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 let it they let let it fly, man. They let it fly, and they just rack up points. They rack up yards. Uh, but most importantly, uh, in the process, they rack up wins. We out. Yeah, this feels like a dream.